welcome to a new episode of the New Leaf Podcast, which is my podcast about knitting, crocheting, and my journey as a full-time knitwear and crochet designer. Hi, my name is Carmen, and I have a new haircut. I'm trying to distract you from that by wearing lipstick and by wearing my new sweater. <laughs> I haven't quite gotten used to it yet. Um, so, yeah, it's like this. <laughs> Very 80s. Um, but I'm wearing it a little bit to the side to get used to it. <laughs> so I am wearing my around the world sweater. I have shown you this on the podcast, but I haven't worn it on the podcast yet. Um, there are still two ends somewhere. <laughs> I wore the sweater last weekend. We were going for a family walk and I was racing to sew in all of the ends and, um, I couldn't get all of it done, so I thought, eh, I'll just wear it with two ends still in there somewhere. Um, so this is my own design. I'll stand up for you. My chair is still here, but you can, you can see it. The hem is flipping up still, but, um, but I've decided that it doesn't bother me that much. Uh, since I completed the pattern, I have updated it a little bit uh, so that the sleeve starts higher so that if you, you know, you can, you can raise your arms without the whole sweater, um, you know, bunching up um, because it was a little bit poncho-y before and uh yeah so i fixed that um what do i want to say about this yeah so the hem flipping i think it's because i made it a little bit too long um because the previous sample that i made is shorter and the hem doesn't flip on that one so yeah but i've chosen that <laughs> i'm not going to be bothered by it um because it only flips up like a little bit, not all the way anymore. And um, yeah, I mean, there's 99% of the sweater that I like and then 1% that I don't like. So I'm going to take that as a win. It's a free pattern on my blog. You can also find a paid PDF version in my Ravelry and in my own web shop. So the PDF version is paid, but it is ad free and you get... Um, pattern separately for each language. So on the blog, sometimes I put the English um, English bit of the pattern first and then the Dutch pattern. Um, and for the PDF, they will be separate. So that will be much easier um, and it's easier to print. So yeah, that's what I'm wearing. And now, <laughs> Um, oh, before I actually get into what I have been making, just a couple of things. You might see some ads in this podcast episode. If so, please do watch them because it really helps me out. Um, and also, I love, love, love your comments and your likes and your subscribes. And please, if you write a comment, I would love it if you would also put your name in there so I know who you are, <laughs> uh, because sometimes uh, people have different handles on Instagram than on YouTube, and yeah, I just, I want to get to know you guys. So I've been knitting a lot of hats, as I was supposed to, and I have finished two hats, and I've cast on another two. So, um... Last time I showed you the Star Wars hat in progress and on my board right there, well, you can barely see it from here, but the Star Wars hat has 30% done. And <laughs> just taking all of the hats here. So you've seen the first one which is this orange and blue hat. The pattern will be up on my blog on November 12th. And, okay, the Star Wars hat, I think last time, oh, last time I was about, I was not quite finished with the 
Star Wars chart. So um, <laughs> this chart is uh, supposed to symbolize the Rebel Alliance for Star Wars. Uh, that's the good guys. And uh, this chart comes from the Star Wars scarf. I'm not sure if that is actually the name, but it's this double-sided scarf. Um, and I've amended the chart a little bit, and I'll post a picture of my chart in my Ravelry project page. Uh, the other charts in here, so this one for example, I have found it on um, Pinterest. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna show you the entire hat now. I am quite pleased with how it turned out. So I have added a starry chart on the top. So when I was done with the Star Wars chart, I felt like it was a bit random, all of the colors. So I decided that, you know, um, you have this chart here and then here, this is just like blocks. Just two of one color and two of another color. And because it was kind of random, I decided to also duplicate those charts so that it's a little bit more cohesive. And I really like how that turned out. And then I added a star chart from Pinterest, um, which I will also put in the Ravelry project page. And so it looks very starry. And I changed the background and the pattern color a couple times to get this kind of gradient effect. And then towards the top, you only continue with... This is also charted. Um, so you only continue with one little stripe and it goes like this, and I, oh, I really, really like this. This is just really beautiful. I'm wondering, <laughs> I'm gonna trace the Pinterest chart and see where it comes from, if it comes from a different pattern, you know, that it's like ripped off, or uh, maybe it's just like a free source somewhere. If it's, if it's that, then I might release a pattern with this because it's so beautiful um it's just so beautiful um so i'm gonna try it on <laughs> um even though my bangs will probably get in front of my eyes but <laughs> all right Okay, I'm gonna turn for you guys. I can't turn all the way because of my chair. Isn't it nice? I'm really, really pleased with how this turned out. Uh, I blocked it on a balloon. Um, which I might have told somewhere. I used the same balloon that I blocked this hat on. Um, when you block on a balloon, make sure that the balloon is like in the top part of the hat and that you don't stretch out the ribbing because uh, you don't want that. So, uh, you know, and usually a balloon is like an inverted drop shape, so it will be like round here and then pointy here so so that is perfect for a hat and yeah because actually i'm trying to find something that i can reuse again and again like a tiny beach ball or something uh because i don't like using one use plastics um so yeah for this one you know i still have balloons I thought I might as well use them because they are here anyways now. Um, so I used it again. 
and again for my third hat. So I've now used the balloon three times. Yay! Um, yes, so the yarn I used for this hat is mostly Escapius Metropolis. I used uh, the colors Karachi, which is number 16, uh, Almaty, which is um, a really light, like, uh, really, really light lilac. That's Almaty um, 56. Then the darker background color here it is uh, Glasgow, which is number two. And then there's a thin stripe of purple, and that is Johannesburg 54. Uh, you can see them even better here. So there is Johannesburg, the purple, and the background is Glasgow. Um, and then the lighter. Um, the light blue here is, no, this is a minty color, that's Marseille, um, Marseille, 19, and then there's light blue, that, which is Madame, which is number 5. I've just written all of these down for a blog post, that's why I know all of them. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I am kind of crazy with numbers. So, and there's another light pearl light purple here which is Taipei number six and um, the rest of them are all non escapist metropolis um, oh, so here the light blue is also number five Madan and then um, the background here is hedgehog fibers with a really thin alpaca thread um, I've used ching fiber in this little bit, the variegated green. Oh, and the purple here, purple, uh, can't speak today, is Scapius Metropolis 55 Lima. Uh, and then I've also used some drops yarn here. Um, but please don't buy drops yarn because they are awful. Um, yeah, the company is awful. Uh, not the yarn per se, but I don't want to support them in any way. Uh, and then here I've also used the hedgehog fibers with the alpaca thread. And I just love how it came out. And yeah, when I was knitting this, I was a little bit doubtful because, as I said, the patterns up until here were a little bit random and then the marling of the variegated yarn with the thin alpaca thread was a little bit too, uh, how do you call that, modeled or like blotched or blotchy in some places, but I actually really like it now because it feels like this, this galaxy cloud or just, you know, there are so many colors in those parts. Yeah, and then because I use so many colors up here, it kind of um, glues it all together, if you know what I mean. What's the word? It kind of connects it all. Yeah, but I really, really like this hat, and I hope the recipient will like it too. So let's take my board and let's color in my progress. Okay, so the Star Wars hat is done. I mean, I still have a couple ends, but I'm calling that done. Then, then I finished a hat that is not on my board, which is a hat for myself. I really love this one as well. Um, so this is the same pattern as my blue and orange hat, um, just in a different size, because um, I wanted to try out a smaller size so that I could add that to the pattern and also just 
knit the pattern one more time and see what it looks like. Oh, and the main reason was because this is a gift knit, I can't put pictures of this hat all over my social media, even though I have done, done that a little bit <laughs> already. I've made a reel of this hat and uh, yeah, the recipient saw it and he's pretty sure that it's for him. So yeah, that was a little bit stupid of me. Um, so now I have blocked all of the gift recipients from my Instagram. <laughs> so I can just post pictures. Um, otherwise I can't show you anything. So yeah, but um, so the logic behind the second hat was that I could show this one on my blog uh, instead of the orange one. But don't you love it? Ugh, I just, I love it so much. Um, and these are mostly the same colors of Scapey's Metropolis. So again, 16 Karachi, uh, the dark blue is Glasgow, um, which is number two, and then the background is the minty green Marseille, number 19, then the purple here, and here is Johannesburg, 54. Then the light purple Taipei. Uh, this is a new one, olive green Depok. Um, the background color here, the uh, wine red, is Bogota, 50. And I think that is all. Oh, the uh, really light pinky, lilac-y background here is uh, Almaty, 50, um, 56. So yeah, that is all of the colors. Uh, I use quite a bit more colors than for this hat, which only uses five, and two of them are almost the same. So you could get away with four colors for this hat. But you know, if you have a lot of leftovers, you can go crazy and uh, use them all. So I'm going to try on this hat as well. This is more my size. This uh, was a little bit bigger. <laughs> it's really nice and snug. I have to think about what I will do with my hair. <laughs> so yeah, I. It's a little bit slouchy on me, just a little bit, but um, yeah, like it very much. Uh, so this is the adult small size. This is the adult medium size, which will fit most people. So the medium size will fit most. And then I have the small or ridiculously small hats such as my own and my mother's. <laughs> as I said last time, my mother goes uh, hat shopping at the kids section. So this will be, you know, a little bit big for her, but um, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then the medium will fit most people. So this one fits me as well, just a little bit more slouchy. Because of the folded brim, there is really, um, you know, it's just extra snug. And you can even roll it up more if you want a more beanie-like style. Yeah. Uh, and then I'm also adding a adult large, um, just in case. And I'll make sure the math all works out. I won't be knitting the largest size, but at least you'll have the numbers. So, yeah, this pattern will be up on November 12th. I still haven't thought of a name. I think maybe just, like, diamonds. Because there are a lot of diamond shapes here. Like, here, here, here. Yeah, but I don't want to go too cliche as diamonds are a girl's best friend. 
because they aren't. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Diamonds are forever. That's a James Bond theme, isn't it? Ooh. And the recipient of this one is a James Bond fan. That might be cool. I'll see. I'll see. And then I have some progress on the uh, third gift knit, which is the luxurious headband. Headband. Not a hat. Headband. Um, and I was knitting this. So I'm using Woolen Vine. Uh, her sock yarn. I think it's the Footsy base. So it's a very high twist. And I forgot the content. And I'm holding it together with my hand dyed mohair in the Momo color. Um, which I have no more left, sorry. Um, and this is the Vanessa headband pattern from Nancy Ritchie, getting pearly with it. And I've washed this already because while I was knitting it, it wasn't feeling very nice. Um, but after washing, it softened up a little bit. But now I just, I just don't know if it will be soft enough for the recipient. It's soft enough for me, but I'm not sure if uh, the recipient is very, um, uh, I don't know what's the word, but if, if they mind a little bit of, oh, it's not really itchy, but uh, is it like, yeah, I'm wondering if she might be too princessy for this yarn. <laughs> I only, I don't like mohair on my neck, but like for sweaters and for hats, I think it's fine. But just in case, I just made a second headband. <laughs> And um, this one is already finished. I made it with my own hand spun. Um, this is 50% uh, wool, 50% alpaca. Well, I'm not quite sure if it's 50-50 because I just took, um, you know, I just took one cloud of wool, then one cloud of alpaca. So, and then one thread is alpaca and one thread is wool, but sometimes the one thread is bigger than the other. So I'm not sure if it's 50-50. Um, yeah, but it's really fun. It's kind of a thick and thin because this was one of my first hand spun yarns. And it was really fun to knit with it. Um, so I knit the same pattern. Where is the seam? <laughs> oh, there it is. Okay, it's almost invisible then. So this is the Vanessa headband. Two cables. Well, actually four, but it looks like two. Yeah, so I am making two because I like torture. And no, I mean, this was very quick. Um, and I figured she, she can choose. Um, and let me just show you how I envision this. <laughs> um, it's a little bit different with bangs. Okay, it works really well if you have like your hair in a ponytail or in a top knot. It's very cute uh, because then you don't want a hat, but you want a headband. So yeah, I really, really like this and this fits me as well. Yeah. It's getting a little bit dark, so I just <laughs> turned on um, my bedside lamp here actually. Um, so my plan is to just finish both of them and have her choose and then I'll take the one that she doesn't want 
and either I keep it because I don't really have a headband and I would really like one <laughs> or I'll uh, gift it to someone else. So what do we do with this? I have finished one, um, so maybe I should put it as halfway done. Let's do that. The luxury headband as halfway done. Okay, getting there, getting there. Um, yes, so that is <laughs> the tail of the two headbands. Uh, but yeah, I really want you um, to remember that for mohair knits, if you don't like the feel of it, perhaps just give it a block, give it a wash and see how it feels after because um, I've knit a bit since then and it's just noticeably uh, softer after washing. So yeah. Um, oh and um, the one thing that I changed from the pattern was that I cast on using uh, Judy's Magic Cast On and I set half of the stitches aside because at the end you, you kind of kitchener it um, or in the pattern you do a mattress stitch but then it's more bulky than if you kitchener it so I did that as well with my um, hand spun version and the seam is right here and I used a cotton yarn or a bamboo it's a Skippy's Bamboo Soft. I used that to seam it because uh, usually you'll have to pull quite tight on it. And I knew that with hand spun this was going to break. So um, yeah, so I used a different yarn for that and you, you barely see it. So that's that. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned recently, but this project bag is from a kit that I uh, got uh, and the, um, the bag is from Bed of Roses, I think. Ooh, I think it's from Scandinavia and I got it with uh, some stitch markers and uh, two skeins of hand-eyed yarn from Sandra, uh, who is Craftfulness on um, Instagram and she sadly doesn't die anymore, um, but yeah. Her yarns were wonderful. So yes, um, two hats down and one headband almost done and I have a couple more to go. Um, and I think I might do the other color work hats first because I've gotten into a groove there and for the beret and for the brioche hat pattern I'd have to really find a pattern first or you know decide on a pattern um, and I haven't decided yet so <laughs> um, but yes those were my hat projects I also wanted to share some yarn that I bought recently um, this is gorgeous uh, so if you watch my Instagram stories you might have seen this already it's from the Mimo Yarn Co um, by Molly, who is from the UK, and I got these beauties. Um, this is her slub base yarn, and slub base just means that um, it's a fingering weight yarn, but once in a while you get these tiny neps, or you know, I call them poofy bits, <laughs> these tiny. Um, cotton candy puffs in there and it's super fun um, and a lot of people don't know what to knit with this and as luck has it I have a pattern for this so last year I knit my vlogmas cowl during Vlogmas, which is a series of vlogs uh, up to Christmas. And this is knit with one skein of slub yarn. You can see some of the puffs here and there. 
and I held it together with a Suri alpaca. So um, the yarn that I used for this sample is by Wolmet Fiera, and her slub base is called Merino Pebbles, and I paired it with a Suri silk. And it is oh, super, super soft. Um, and because you use the extra yarn. So I will be using a mohair for this one. Um, and it kind of fills up the gaps in between the puffs. Um, and yeah, it just changes the texture and it makes it not quite so abrupt as this would be on its own. Um, yeah, so um, the mohair is going to be a little bit thinner than the Suri alpaca, uh, which is actually good because this cow, it has gotten quite a bit wider since I um, made it. Uh, so I'm going to use the same stitch count, add a smaller needle to hopefully get a tighter fitting cowl. Now this one I still wear a ton. And I just, um, if I wear it with a coat, I just stretch it out to one side and then fold it double and then I tuck it in somewhere there. So that's nice, um, you know, big piece of fabric and it doesn't hang open. Um, or <laughs> if it rains, you could, I sometimes wear it like this if it rains, but you know, I'm not outside a lot if it rains. Um, yeah, but I'm hoping that this one will have um, a snugger effect. Um, yeah, so I'm excited for that. Uh, so yeah, you can find Molly on Instagram as the Mimo Yarn Co. And I think she has dots in between the words uh, for her Instagram handle. Oh, no, it's here. Oh, no, she doesn't have dots. The Mimo Yarn Co. Um, oh, should I tell you the contents? So this is 90% superwash merino and 10% nylon. There is just a tiny thread that is spun, how do you say that? Plied, that it's plied with, um, that's holding the yarn together. Um, yeah, so that's her superwash slub, and then the kid mohair is 72% uh, kid mohair and 28% um, silk. Oh, this is just beautiful. So this is the uh, autumn autumnal, and this is the autumn walks. And I thought they were a fabulous combination. She has a lot of slub yarn left, and you can make uh, some great combination with mohair. Uh, so please do visit her website. And I'll be making that. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to cast it on soon, but otherwise, this Vlogmas. Um, yeah, and... Drum roll. <laughs> This Sunday, I'll be launching my first ever ebook, the Subtle Sock Collection, as I've been talking about a few times. And the socks are over there. Oh, and they're on top of a project that I still want to talk about. Um, but first, the Subtle Sock Collection. It's a collection of four color work patterns. This is blood, which is leaf. Brum, which is source. Oops. Brice, which is breeze. And bloom, which is bloom. Or flower, actually, more accurately. Um, and these are all part of the Subtle Sock collection. So you get these four patterns. Um, I have had the best time this week compiling the ebook. So I had finished all of the single patterns and now I'm putting them, or I have put them in an ebook um, using Canva and it, it's just so much fun. Uh, I made it look super pretty. Um, 
yeah, it's a really different look from my usual pattern um, uh, PDFs. And it will be for sale uh, starting on Sunday in my Ravelry shop and in my New Leaf shop. And um, it will be uh, for sale for $21.99, so that's uh, euros, $21.99. And you will get 30% off using code MOMO. And that code will be valid until November 15th. Let me actually note that down, November 15th. Otherwise I'll forget. Um, yes, and I'm just, uh, you know, setting up the final bits and pieces. Um, the patterns, you can already preview them on Ravelry, so the pictures and everything, and you can add them to your queue or favorite them, uh, which helps a lot. <laughs> I'm trying to get it up to the uh, Hot Right Now page on Ravelry, um, because that is always a huge boost in sales, so I'm trying <laughs> to get there. Um, yeah, but they are up for preview now, and then uh, the ebook will launch this Sunday. Uh, it will be available in English and in Dutch. And when you buy the ebook, you will, um, you of course, get the ebook, but you will also get the four singular PDF patterns. Um, of course, in the ebook, you can um, choose to only print out the pages for one of the patterns. Um, but, you know, I just thought I have the singular PDFs, why not just put them in there? Uh, so that's what I'll do. And then the singular patterns will go on sale in January. So if you want them, get them now. Um, because the singular patterns, you know, my patterns um, at the moment are all 6.99 euro. So you're getting the ebook for roughly the price of three patterns. Well, you get four patterns in there. And then now with the 30% off code, you get it for like 15, 16 euro, uh, which is like two and a half patterns price. So you will not get the singular patterns at this price. Um, so if you want them, please do get the ebook. <laughs> Um, yeah, I would, I would really appreciate it. And um, all of the patterns feature a gusset. They are toe up and gusset for toe up socks is quite unusual. Um, but for color work socks, you know, it really, really improves the fit. So uh, you get a toe up gusset, uh, a short row heel, and then the heel flap. And I will be putting um, a tutorial for that on my Patreon page. So I still have to film it. Um, I'll be filming it on a non collar work sock, you know, just to keep it simple. Um, and filming how to do the gusset shirt row and heel flap. The instructions, the written instructions are all in the pattern. So you don't need to worry about it. Um, I've, I've had it tested and I specifically asked my testers if they found it clear enough and they said they did um yeah i mean <laughs> of course there are a lot of ways that i could uh make it even clearer but um yeah <laughs> i didn't want to add pages and pages and pages uh about the cassette so um the instructions are all written out in the pattern and then if you want extra guidance uh, you can go onto my patreon page uh, and i will be uh, publishing the tutorial for that later this year i think that will be in december uh, but just so you know um, and they all have the same base pattern uh, just different stitch count and different uh, color work chart uh, and different colors of course but you know <laughs> Um, and I'm just super excited to see which colors you will pick. And yeah, I just hope you'll have some extra cozy socks this winter because um, I've allowed myself to wear this pair already once. And it was just the coziest. So yeah, because color work, you know, it's two layers of yarn. So it's pretty cozy. Uh, yeah, and they're pretty quick to knit too. Okay, so 
It will go live on Sunday. Um, I'll leave a link to my newsletter if you want, um, if you don't want to miss it. And use code MOMO in all caps for 30% off. I had hoped that Momo would uh, want to make an appearance this episode, but um, she's asleep in the closet. Her new favorite spot, so I think she'll be uh, staying in there. Um, and also, uh, I've been doing some other crafts. I've been, um, <laughs> I've been paper crafting. Uh, I've been uh, making some Halloween decorations, uh, painting and cutting some bats from paper and putting them on the windows um, because this year I'm actually thinking of participating in Halloween I've even bought candy um, you know all individually wrapped because of the Rona and um, yeah I'm wondering if someone will come to my door <laughs> perhaps not but we'll and I'm also making a wreath with this um, metal hoop. I'm making some pom-pom, no, not pom-poms, pumpkins. Uh, <laughs> this is the first one. It's um, very orange. <laughs> oh my god, it's very orange on the screen. This is three strands of... Um, cotton yarn, which I have a lot of because I used to do a lot of amigurumi and now I don't anymore. So I'm using that. I'm just gonna turn off the light because uh, it's not better. <laughs> Still very, very bright. But I thought, um, you know, I've already sewn this together, but it was basically just a tube and now I am I don't know until when I should knit. I just saw this on Pinterest. Uh, so I'm going to knit a bit more and then I'll cinch that in as well. And then somehow make a pumpkin out of it. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, very last minute. <laughs> uh, even though I should be knitting hats and should be perfecting my ebook. But anyway. I'll put the light back on. That's better. Okay, so I think that is all. Uh, I've talked for a long time. Um, so I'm not going to keep you any longer. Thank you so much for watching. Please do comment, like, and subscribe if you haven't already. And happy knitting. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Oh, bonjour. Hey.